welcome to edition five of Trusted.tv. TV. A bit of a bumper issue today, so you're going to hear a little bit less of me and a bit more music. But kicking off, we've got two videos. First of all, AP Tobler was part of a trio that opened the last edition of Trusted.tv. TV. But this time we've got her solo playing all the instruments and voices. She is a talented young singer songwriter from San Jose in California with a track which is called Lazy Eye. And after that, you'll hear a video from a bit of a Trusted Doc TV regular, Amy Sincere from London and her new one, which is called No Pain, No Gain. But first of all, it's AP Tober.
Well, in addition to Trusted.tv, we had an amazing live lockdown performance on multiple Zoom screens from Dan Maitland and the End of the World Party Band. Dan is a musician who has done lots of things, including playing for the likes of Juno Washington's Ram Jam Band as a saxophonist. But in this band, he plays guitar and sings. Well, they're back with another one of their amazing multi-screen Zoom performances on a track called Creosote Jam. It's Dan Maitland and the End of the World Party Band. Mimeographs are sophisticated feelings Fixed by alcohol breath Picking up the telephone to reach her But she has gone down to the queer soul jam Analogize his condition Grow a set and arms and legs too Stacked up in the hospital admission Counting out the lips and the tongue Collapsing weather Numbers down for the first time in years Come back, both boy and girl have them Line up and let's see Next up, it's a new video from a band called Liverpool. They're called Oh Well Goodbye, and this song is in significance. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm very pleased to welcome onto the show Rosie Bergonzi. So Rosie, welcome to Trusted.tv. Hey, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Uh, now I know, because the last time I saw you would have been something like December, January, when you played a big yeah. for Trusted.live. Um, and I know you were very busy playing, touring with Nana Cherry and doing various things. How's lockdown affected all of that? Quiet, yeah, it's been quiet. I think I, for maybe a, a month, I, I was like, brilliant, I'm going to become zen. I'm going to do yoga every day. I'm going to take up jogging. I'm going to make, I don't know, really delicious food. But that has absolutely nosedived. And uh, instead I found myself making videos, which has been, <laughs> well, it takes be up a lot of time <laughs> in a different way. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, making videos is not a bad way to be using that time, really, is it? No, I guess not. Uh, not my body maybe disagreed. It quite enjoyed all that yoga, but it's uh, it's now it's now hunched over a laptop a bit more. But yeah, it's been really interesting. I think I've been I went straight from school to university uh, to music school, and I just I never really had had this kind of three months break. Um, so it's been challenging. It's been hard to find kind of who I am when I'm not doing gigs. I'm not working, but it's it's been interesting. Yeah, it's it's not been all bad, obviously. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting because obviously first time I met you at Goldsmiths was about nine years ago. And I guess you were, what, 18 then, just straight out of school? Yeah, doing, straight out of school, yeah. As an undergraduate. And you went straight on from Goldsmiths to Guildhall, didn't you? That's right. So then I did a two-year master's um, at Guildhall, just in, specifically in percussion, which was yeah. a different experience again, very intense. And then from there, I just kind of went straight into the world of work, which was brilliant. I was really lucky to be quite busy I mean, obviously, I had the classic existential freelance crises, crisis fees. I have those all the time about I'm never going to work again. But I was kept quite busy um, for a while, which was brilliant. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping that when this is all, all over, that will pick back up and carry on. So, I mean, you've played, obviously, with Nana Cherry. Is anyone else that you've worked with that, um, you know, that, that we'd probably like to have heard of? I don't think so. M many smaller, smaller artists um, around London. Amy Doyley is a great one to work with. She's brilliant. Um, but generally, it was just Nana because I kind of got that quite quickly, and that took a lot of time, obviously. Um, so that was about two years. To, I was doing that for about two years, up right up until lockdown. So that was quite um, quite a juggernaut through the career, which was brilliant. Uh, but uh, other otherwise, I did. Um, I just I played at the Globe last year doing a, a theatre show, which was really fun. Um, and then orchestrally, I I, w I was doing sort of um, sort of um, I played with Chinake Orchestra, which is brilliant. So we got to do a prom and those sorts of things. So it was quite quite a diverse uh, career. Amazing career already, and you're obviously still very young, so it's brilliant. Um, <clears throat> now you've. Um, recently stepped out from behind the drums and the percussion rig and started doing vocals so so um was that specifically inspired by all the events around black lives matter or was it something you were thinking of doing anyway not at all yeah a hundred percent inspired <laughs> by that i was very happy with my career never saying words and just hitting things um that felt good but then i saw i felt so many feelings uh, like a wave of emotion towards the response Black Lives Matter, um, uh, triggered by the death of George Floyd, but you know, obviously, m multiple influences, and this kind of outpouring of, of information from from people who almost seem to be coming up to me and saying, "Oh, Rosie, uh, it turns out ra racism is is not very good. Have you heard of it?" And I was like, "I know. <laughs> I've been saying this for a while." And and I kind of I wanted to write a piece, so I wrote a hand pan piece. Um, but it just didn't, it wasn't saying, like, music is brilliant, it can express so much, but I felt like I needed to have some words. Um, and I realised that the person that was going to say the words is going to have to be me. So I cleared my throat, did a vocal warm-up, and I just sort of said, yeah, I wrote the poem in a night, and I, and I recorded it. And, um, and I walked out into the living room, said to my housemate, um, can you help me today? She was like, yeah. I was like, I I've recorded a song. She's like, what? I've recorded a song, and now I want to make a video. And she's brilliant. She was just like, Okay, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so she filmed me. She's giving me directorial notes as I was seeing it into the camera, all just on our phones. Um, yeah. 
you don't come across in the video as, as somebody that's never done vocals before as to be said you look very kind of relaxed like you've been doing it all your life but uh, oh, um, <clears throat> but um i mean obviously the black lives matter thing was was the focus for this and um i mean speaking as a, a seasoned anti-racist campaigner i think we both experienced something similar in yeah. terms of the cynicism about some of the people who suddenly become all passionate about racism and obviously it's not a bad thing that people are no. waking up to it but you've challenged people in the lyrics of this track um yeah. to still be that passionate when it's no longer the flavor of the week um, Absolutely, yeah. and, uh, you've done so in a pretty direct way but i think that had to be done really i think that message that you put it across in a very clever way well thanks well i mean i, I wanted to speak to my to my friends or certainly to my wider circle um, who maybe hadn't had much reason or they hadn't made much reason to engage in black issues specifically or race issues um, and yeah I wanted to just challenge them to say don't just jump on the bandwagon just because everyone else is doing something instead I wanted to say welcome to this party like come in like you know you are a little bit late but come and like join us now and stay here and do good useful things because I think there was a lot of anger about people and I, like you can't be mad at people for not having known anything about racism <coughs> I, I mean I think it's brilliant I don't know how they managed to avoid the topic of racism and get to whatever race they are but if they have I'm not mad about it I'm they must have had a really cool chilled out life but now you do know you can't go back to sleep there's no excuse for that the way that you've put it saying I don't trust you white folk I don't trust you to stay woke but then later you move that to, I want to trust you. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's really good. I think it's the right message. And if people are offended by that, yeah. well, that's, that probably is, is proof that they don't get it. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, I think I was really, I, I don't know why I was surprised, but I was by the amount of uh, and people who were just annoyed and who were saying, why are you saying white folk? Don't call me white folk. I'm not a white person. And I was like, well, you, well, you are. <laughs> Like that is a fact like you know and so and i think it seems like white people really aren't used to being addressed as white people because they think that a white person is just a person but a black person needs to be separated or given black or you know given any other kind of thing to separate them from the normal thing which is white people so people some people got really annoyed by me they were saying why are you talking to me by the color of my skin i'm not a white person i'm just a person but the reason why I directed it to white people specifically is because they do have the option of forgetting about racism, whereas people of colour, black people, whatever, don't have that option. Like, I've never forgotten about racism. I've never been like, oh, what, what is that? What is that racist? I don't, know. I, don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't have that option because I experience it or it's, it's done to me. So that's why I spoke to white people directly. And um, I think, yeah, the, some people really didn't like it. And um, yeah, I just wonder why. Because I'm used to being called a black person. I'm a black person. I own that label. That is me. The burning question now is that, having done this, are we now going to see Rosie Begonzi, solo artist, poet, singer, <laughs> as kind of a thing? I mean, it's a great question. I kind of had this. So I, so I made, as I said, I literally wrote the song in a night. The next day, got up, recorded it with my housemate, edited it that day, put it out, just because I... I I'm too much of a perfectionist to leave it. I just had to like blah, do it. It was too scary. I had to run too fast for the self doubt to like catch up with me. Just did it, put it out. I think the next day, and it got a massive reaction. And then I was like, what do I do next on my YouTube channel? Because every Monday I'm releasing this tutor very cheerful tutorial series because I think classical music is very inaccessible to to all sorts of people. So. I used this lockdown to make a video series, which every week we're just kind of going through Pulse and um, introduction to playing the handpan. And so it's just kind of really, really beginner, basic level, get involved stuff you can do anywhere with any instrument. Yeah, well, I watched a couple of those yesterday. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure you knew it all already, Neil. Explaining to non-UK people what a difference is with a crotchet and a quarter note. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is no difference. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, I've had that before where I've used the term crotchet to somebody from outside the UK and they've looked at me like, what on earth are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I mean, it's stuff that we know, but most people don't know. And it's so inaccessible and it's scary to just assume that people, I think so much of this literature and this information assumes such a high knowledge of, of 
prior knowledge by the audience and that makes it scary and inaccessible and people say oh i don't understand classical music i don't get it and it's like no you do it's brilliant it just it's it seems scary so like let's just i just want to make sure that it's another voice adding all those like lower steps so that people can walk up and start to discover and explore by themselves so we're moving very slowly but yeah so anyway i didn't know whether i was going to put that video out on the monday i think i released it on the thursday this really kind of hard hitting shouting at people video and then i was sort of like hey folks and welcome to accents and you know it, it, it seems a bit incongruous but i think i decided it's all just part of me and 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 that's really the point is that as an artist i don't talk about race issues a lot because especially classical music circles but any circles aren't always the friendliest places to do that but i'm still me and so so yeah, and, and actually today I've, I've released a really silly singing hand pan dancing video because it's all part of me. So what am I going to do? Am I going to keep making poems? Am I going to try and do a solo career? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I like it. I really enjoy it. It's really fun. I think it's a like really good reason to do it if you enjoy it. Yeah. I think, I mean, I'm going to have to try and learn that rap I wrote yesterday that was really hard. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I think I'm going to keep trying to do it because it yeah while I'm enjoying it and while it still feels like a burning issue and spoiler alert I don't think they're going to solve racism in the next six months so it probably is going to feel quite urgent for a while then I I do want more people to hear my take on the message um, specifically so yeah for now I'm doing it I, I'm unsure where that will go or what my goals are really maybe I should sit down and think about it but yeah it's fun and I like it and it feels it feels good to be doing something rather than just sitting and letting things be the same and once you're out of lockdown presumably you're still going to be doing things like Booba Kiki and playing with Nano etc yeah I mean I hope it'll all just continue in this weird mishmash dovetail career that it is already um just add another confusion into it all and you know which hat am I wearing today am I my the hat that goes into children's classes and gets them to write a song or am i the hat that's shouting about racism or am i the hat that's playing triangle in an orchestra like i don't know um but i love that i love that that gets to be my career and i get to have a day where i do all three maybe yeah i mean <clears throat> you know most people who, who are involved you know in self-employment or in independent music tend to wear a lot of hats don't they so why not yeah, yeah. I think if you're enjoying it just go for it and and uh, um, and, and obviously you're good at it if you're good at something then you know why not just um see what see where it goes and, uh, yeah I, th I think the hardest thing for me was having the confidence that anyone would want to listen to what i had to say like especially in classical music you sit down you play the part you go home right um obviously you play it beautifully with a lot of emotion but you are more of a, a conduit for the music so for me to say someone cares what I, Rose Bogonzi, am about to say to them is, is scary. That was a big thing. Um, and I think I'm still sort of feeling that, that people aren't going to want to hear my words. They're not going to be receptive or, or whatever. And that is true in some cases. But I think just doing it and just, just having something to say and saying it was kind of the most important first step. Um, yeah, it's scary, but it, it's, it's okay. And it is so much scarier than playing drums. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the first time I did it live, I just wanted to, oh, my heart was going and it's only like a two minute rap and I, I couldn't I couldn't believe that I got to the end of it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah it doesn't yeah. sound like somebody that's never done it before. So you, <laughs> you're obviously a natural. But, um, just wanted to, to ask you one final thing before we wrap up the interview. I mean, you mentioned classical music. Um, one of the one of the things that struck me when I first studied at Goldsmiths was here we are at a university in South East London, one of the most diverse areas in Europe, and looking round the room at the other postgraduate students, there is only one non-white face in the room. There clearly is a problem in classical music, um, not just in terms of the perception that that somehow white European 20th century composers are more important than everybody else. Mm. But also there clearly is a problem with them being able to engage people and young people, especially across our diverse community. Yeah. Do you think that it's time that the classical music world was shaken up a bit? Because I thought that for a while. I 100% think that. I would love that. I think, um, I think education is the key thing. Um, 
to 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 help shake that up so allowing i just i think uh but classical music can seem so impenetrable it's just you know it's a bunch of old people in like wearing suits playing music that i have to be quiet for like 45 minutes and it's really exhausting but it 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 doesn't have to be that i think there's a lot of a lot of things that can change in any of those elements and i think but i think just an appreciation for it's so important like getting music into the curriculum embedded having every child singing just all the time playing instruments and actually adults singing as well like that's just everyone should sing all the time it's great for you it's beautiful it's brilliant and i think if it's not seen as classical music is this other thing which i can't get into but it's just all seen as music that you know oh i actually prefer like late romantic music okay well i actually prefer rock music okay well i prefer you know like rather than this like massive umbrella of fear you know i think i think that's possible but there's a lot of gatekeepers to classical music who would need to decide that that was something that they wanted to do and I think, honestly, leaving lockdown might be the moment to do it because everything has to be different for now anyway. And um, they really need to, people need to start deciding who they want to be filling those concert halls because the people that are there right now aren't sustainable. And I don't know that there's a new younger generation coming in to care to fill that, to fill that void. Um, so, you know, lockdown or no lockdown, classical music industry was looking at, it was heading into a bit of a crisis anyway. Opera, I went to an opera last, uh, just before lockdown actually. And like, still, we must have been the youngest people there by like probably 15 years. And it's kind of like, that's not really sustainable. That's not tenable. So I don't know is the answer. <laughs> but I hope, I hope that the passion and the joy for, for all sorts of music can continue and that we can continue to make all sorts of art forms and, and have them be received and enjoyed. And I think, I mean, maybe my career is a little suggestion that it doesn't, it shouldn't be in these separate boxes it should all be mixed together and my classical music playing obviously informs my rapping which obviously informs my workshop reading with children which obviously informs like my work as a as a session musician they're all so connected and if i was to try and separate them out and not take any skills across that would be so sad so similarly we put our playlists on shuffle like just do it just include a, include a bit of beethoven in your shuffle like i don't know <laughs> Well, you're 100% speaking my language here, Rosie. Um, well, thank you so much for doing the interview and uh, great to have you on Trusted.tv. TV. And no doubt you will be back soon on the programme as well. And best of luck with everything both in lockdown and post lockdown. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if people want to hear, me, hear more from my absolute mess of a YouTube channel, that would be great. Subscribe over there. Um, and it, who knows what it will be next? It might be a cover video. It might be rapping. It might be introduction <laughs> to <laughs> rests or whatever I'm going to do next. Um, but yeah, do, do the show some support. That would be so useful. And yeah, enjoy, enjoy the rest of the show. I'm not just a hashtag. I was black before you cared. Lockdown life and sourdough madness. Hashtag follow my liberal sadness. You didn't care. It wasn't cool. I don't trust you, white folk, to stay interested. I don't trust you, white folk, to stay woke. Tweeting is fun when Instagram pings and the likes pour in. Facebook gives you the win, but it won't be hip soon to be no longer talking to white people about race to leave white fragility and pride of place. You can't keep this up. You want to stay in this pace? I don't trust you, white folk, to stay woke. Prove me I'm wrong. I want this to be different. Maybe 2020 is the year you're all gonna listen. I don't trust you, white folk. You didn't know our suffering before. Okay. Or no witness to our trauma before. Okay. That stuff doesn't happen over here. Okay. You told yourself that. Okay. But you know better now. Because I'm still black, but today you care. So if you're listening, vow to change yourself and anyone you teach. Everything you learn is something you can teach. I want to trust you, white folk. I do. But you have to stay connected every day. Every week, every year, this cause is our cause. Your anger, your thirst for change isn't a candle that flares and dies with shares. It's embers that seethe every day till you're filled with fire and you can't be quiet. Make caring a habit when there's no death born to stoke you. Stay awake and listen when we tell you what we go through. Amplify. 
black voices and care. Care about me. Care about us. Care about all of this. I want to trust you, white folk. I do. Don't leave me as your hashtag. I'm not just a hashtag. Next up, videos are two tracks that are quite different from each other. First of all, from the Nottinghamshire Derbyshire borders, it's the Happy Somethings, and from their new EP, Thinking is Free, part two, a track called Something You Might Call Love. And then that will be followed by Small House, AKA David Little from South East London, with a track called Atlantic. But first of all, it's the Happy Somethings. Something you might call love Something you might call love Something you might call love 
Well, next up, videos by two artists that we've had on the show before, Violent Vicky from Long Beach in California with her new one, which is called Circle Square, performed live in lockdown. And that will be followed by the video for No Fear by Debris Discs from Derbyshire. First of all, though, performing live, it is Violent Vicky. Circle Square.
Well, I'm very pleased to welcome onto the show Darcy from the band Liar Liar. So Darcy, welcome to Trusted.TV. TV. Thank you so much for having me. So uh, I'm going to have to start by asking you a question that's been puzzling me all week. Um, okay. the, the band's described in the press release as being from Watford and Birmingham, which is <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a strange mix. So which, yeah. which is it or is it both? Uh, it is both. It genuinely is both. Um, so the boys, all three of the boys are based uh, Midlands, Birmingham kind of way, um, quite close to each other. And I am the Watford connection. So I actually met Benji, who is our uh, drummer. I met him and Tom, actually, our keyboardist, on a short film that we were shooting. Because I'm also an actor in, um, in London. Um, and yeah, the rest is kind of history. But we are genuinely from, I'm Watford, born and bred, uh, still live here. And the boys are Birmingham, Midlands, born and bred. I had to ask you because I'm a Watford FC fan, you see. So. Are you? <laughs> yeah, originally from Hemel Hempstead, from my sin. Oh, right. um, so, uh, so, yes, big Watford fan. So, uh, yeah, we're a Watford fan know. household. I'm not what? as um, personally, emotionally involved with Watford FC, but my other half is absolutely to the core. Oh. Good. Can't think about anything else on match day. What for us? Glad, glad to hear that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's He's excellent. very nervous this time of year. He's very nervous um, for what's going to happen. So, fingers and toes crossed for you guys. It makes my life easier when Watford are playing well. So. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we certainly need all, all the luck we can get. Okay, well, let's talk about Liar Liar. So, you came into the band sort of back end of last year and. Um, yeah you on the, the, the single Young, which I've been playing on my radio show. And right. I guess all kinds of plans, and then along came lockdown and scuppered them all. Yeah, yeah, we had, um, we had some quite, quite a few plans to gig quite a lot. And also, um, we we're gonna play a festival, which is gonna be really fun. And everything's obviously just been put on hold. So, you know, we, we do still have plans for kind of future releases and stuff, but as and when they can happen, it's really dependent on, you know, what happens with this pandemic, I guess. Yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, releasing tracks is, is always part of a strategy, isn't it? So mm -hmm. if you can't play yeah. live, then I guess you have to be doing other stuff. Have you, have you been involved in live streaming stuff at all? Yeah. Um, so we started actually right when lockdown kind of happened. Um, we were like, we've got to try and stay creative, both for, you know, the sake of the band, but also like as a creative person, when you're not doing anything creative, you start to go insane. And there's only so many like series on Netflix I can binge before I'm completely bored. So uh, we actually started by doing kind of lockdown live covers and um, the boys, cause obviously I don't live with the boys um, and the boys, I mean, Tom and uh, Ben do, but the boys don't usually live together either. So we're like, we can't meet. Um, and so we would all film our kind of separate bits and Tom and Ben mainly because they're kind of our geniuses in the band, me and Chris, you know, pretty faces and a bit of fun. Um, they, Tom and Ben kind of made it into these covers and we did the first one, I think we did uh, Electric Field by MGMT. And then we got a really good response. We like kept going. And then in terms of like live streams, our guys at Loom, our booking agents, they, um, got involved with some really cool stuff so we did uh, one for save our venues um which was a cover that we did we did a live stream for um with go to beat and homemade live um which we actually donated the proceeds to nhs charities together and then our most recent one we did one with war child and hot Vox music um that we filmed actually socially distant outside because the new rules came into play so i drove up to them uh, which was amazing and we'd film that and we raised some money for War Child, which was really great. That's fantastic, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had a couple of bands on this show who've recorded live tracks using Zoom, so the video no has been literally kind of, in one case, seven screens with all the band members <laughs> in, their, in their homes and gardens and stuff, all, yeah. all playing with headphones on and relating to each other that way. It's amazing. Yeah, it's cool. Things we can it's, cool. it's amazing what you can do with technology. And thank God we have it, right? Absolutely, yeah, definitely. I mean, I know a lot of people have been doing live stream gigs, and I, mean, I was looking at one this morning by an artist that I manage, and uh, you know, clearly that has been a, a really good way of getting exposure. Yeah. Um, what's um, the plan once we are out of lockdown? Are you are you looking to put a bunch of dates together for the new year? Yeah, 
I mean, I think that's the plan. Our big thing is we're working towards like a headline show, I think early next year. Um, obviously again, dates TBC, because we want to make sure we have a good run up to it. But yeah, I think as soon as the kind of, we know that the industry is opening back up to gigs and stuff, we just want to get out there and do it. For more sake than anything, I'm just, we're just desperate to play to an audience other than a screen, I think. Um, but yeah, I guess the major plans are, we, we have, Young's obviously just come out, and we have plans for another single to release at the end of August. Um, now, obviously, usually we'd go up and we work with our producers in St. Helens School, Sugar House. We usually go to them and record in studio and kind of do that over a couple of days. Uh, we can't do that, but we think we should be able to, hopefully, record at home because we've got some pretty nice equipment and basically send tracks over to them and they're going to try and do it in studio without us actually being there. Uh, if that can happen, great. We've got another release at the end of August, which we'll be really excited about. And we'll shoot another like socially distant music video. Happy to do that. I mean, who knows what the rule's going to be. But after that, yeah, it's just getting on stage, getting some more gigs in. Um, and just building back up momentum, I think. I think that's the same for a lot of people. It's like you had all this momentum and it's just gone completely... It's just stopped completely. So it's just about rebuilding that back up, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's the same for me as a promoter that um, mm. you build a night up and then suddenly lockdown comes and you're thinking yeah. how long before we're allowed to actually have enough people in a room to make it worth yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. promoting again. Yeah, and then you've got to build oh, that back up. Well, I suspect there are a lot of people who will be dying to actually go to a gig. Yeah, I, I mean, I hope so. Yeah, Wherever you but... are out there, please do come. <laughs> We'd love to have you. Yeah, and no, I'm sure you'll be fine. I'm sure one, once you are able to play, people will be so pleased yeah. you're going to watch live music again. Um, I but, I mean, sounds like you have a plan in place. So another single coming out, um, hopefully in the autumn, and then are yeah. you looking at an album maybe in the new year? I'd love to make an album. I think right now we're focusing on singles. Um, Tom writes most of our stuff and he has kind of a back catalogue of loads of music that he either didn't release or he just didn't do much with. And it's been really fun. Ava, he's written like a, a new, Young was actually written year, quite a few years ago, I think. Um, and it was kind of, we came back to it and found out, gave it a whole new life. And Sugar House always have an amazing way of breathing something into it that we never even could have thought of. Um, but yeah, but some of the new stuff and then looking back at some of his old stuff, it's really fun at the moment just to kind of go back to his old tracks and be like, what can we do with it now? Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to make an album in the new year. I think it would be a really great step for us. Um, but kind of like with everything, what I quite like about us and I quite like about the way we're working is I don't plan too far ahead. None of us seem to. It's more, we're just going with what's feeling good, with guidance, with people we trust and what happens next year happens next year. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's a sensible approach. And certainly the way things have changed with digital, it isn't the uh, the old thing where you put out two singles on an album. You, know, yeah. you might be better off just putting out individual tracks until yeah. such times as there's actually a reason to release an album. Um, but uh, it sounds like you've got that all, all sorted. Have you been making use of BBC Introducing as one of the ways to get your music out there? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously the benefit of us living and being from two separate places is that we do have two links to BBC Introducing. So uh, Better Off was played across both uh, BBC Introducing Hereford and Worcester and um, Bed Tarts and Barks, which was really great. Uh, we actually sent Young in to BBC Introducing a while ago. So Hereford and Worcester, I believe, have also already played it. Um, and I've said it, we've kind of re jigged the memories of the guys at Bed's Hearts Box. So they've been amazing and really good at helping us to kind of spread the word. It's and Danny, isn't it? I know them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's really great. We actually had plans just before lockdown, when Better Off came out, we were due to go in and have a, like an interview with them live and stuff in the Bed's Hearts Box studio. But alas, COVID uh, stopped that from happening. So obviously, hopefully, we'll be back in there as soon as we can. Okay, great stuff. Well, it's all sounding uh, very exciting and clearly you've got good people around you, good yeah. team um, advising you, etc. So uh, best of luck with it all and, and thanks ever so much for coming on and sharing all this with oh, us. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so nice to talk to someone who is, a, you know, A, the band, B, my close circle of friends. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. Thanks for being on the show. No worries. Thank you. Bye.
Hands are tied, smiling lips ahead With no intention of going home It looks so easy in the way she danced A beat in time with a beat of her own She feels the heat of another man Another drink, another place to go The night is young She curves the sun We've got another good couplet for you. First of all, I'm delighted to have on the show Marina Vesic. She performs under the name Black Marine. Marina is a brilliant composer, pianist and singer from Serbia, who I've known for a long time and released the track by a compilation album on Demerara Records some five years ago. She's now back with a single called Devil's Kiss and she sent us a video for that. And that will be followed by another live lockdown performance from Rookery, who were on the first edition of this show, performing an improvisation around the dawn chorus. So that's Rookery from South East London. But first of all, it's from Serbia, Marina Vesic, aka Black Marine and Devil's Kiss. Thank mm-hmm. you.
Well, next up, we've got two videos, both by bands who have previously been show closers on this TV show. The first one is by Def Robot from Cumbria, and it's a song called Brickland. And then after that, it will be the Jojo Man Band, AKA Nick Woodgate from the South Coast, and the song called Ghostface Killer. But first of all, it's Def Robot. <laughs>
Well, that's it for this rather lengthy edition of Trust to Talk TV. We'll be back on Tuesday, the 21st of July for edition six with more recordings of live lockdown performances, more new videos, more interviews and more chat. For now then, goodbye and take care and see you soon.